This was the presentation from class where many of you were absent, so I thought I would run through it briefly here. This was intentionally left kind of vague, and you'll notice some of the formatting might be off because I exported it quickly to a PowerPoint, um, trying a new format, and so you might see where the, some things don't exactly line up, so forgive me for that. So I introduced this without a lot of background with the intention of having kids figure out where we were going as we worked through it. So the first thing I showed them are the rules for today and it was just about the process. Um, if they figured it out, don't talk about it and be silent for the day. Um, we weren't entirely silent but just don't give it away where we're headed. So a couple of the things and then for you guys you can still do this use a lined sheet of paper and then two pieces of blank paper with two different colored writing utensils and that's so that you can differentiate between some information that we'll have you do in a little bit. So I'd like you to write up to 10 questions about this sentence and it might be 10 questions and it might be five questions or six and it could be about anything that's in the question. There's not a bad question that you can ask. Don't get confused that it's not an important question <laughs> or an important sentence. Just write 10 questions about something that this sentence makes you think about. So here's the sentence. There's a lot that depends on that red wheelbarrow over there, the one covered in rainwater near the chickens. Might seem kind of random, but write some questions down about that sentence. Pause the video here and play it again when you have at least five or six questions written down about that sentence. Okay, welcome back. Now, the next example is the same sentence, but it's it's been um, polished a little bit. So much depends upon a red wheelbarrow glazed with rainwater beside the white chickens. Now it's not covered in rainwater, it's not near or next to the chickens, it's glazed and beside. And some of the wordiness has been taken out. Write a couple more questions based on the phrasing in this sentence and pay particular attention to the language. Go ahead and pause your video and come back when you're ready to continue. Okay, so you've got a couple extra questions, you've added two or three more to your list. The next one looks different. The next version of this sentence is how it originally appeared and how it's supposed to appear. This is a poem called The Red Wheelbarrow. So much depends upon a red wheelbarrow glazed with rain water beside the white chickens. Now you can read that as prose so much depends upon a red wheelbarrow glazed with rainwater beside the white chickens. But most poets will tell you that you need to respect the intention of the poet when they arrange lines like this with an intention to keep those words separate. And so you can just add a little hint of a break. Now, this is a much different presentation than seeing it in a sentence. And so I'd like you to think of additional questions that come to you as you think about this as a poem. So that's not just words, that's also structure. It's what you see in the poem and what you don't see. I'd like you to come up with at least five or six additional questions, up to ten, up to ten additional questions. Pause the video, write down your questions, and come back when you're ready to continue. Okay, so hopefully you got several more questions out of seeing this as a poem and now I'm going to challenge you to do a couple things a little bit differently. I want you to think, and you don't have to write anything down yet, but I want you to think about how the questions you wrote about the poem were different from the questions you wrote about the sentences. In the sentences you might have asked things like, what's so important about the wheelbarrow? Is it still raining? Where is this? For the poem, you might have asked things like, how come its structure is the way that it is? Does it matter that the structure is the way that it is? I had students notice that the pattern is three words, one word, three words, one word, three words, one word. 
Three words, one word. Three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one. Does that matter? Does it matter that each of the one word lines is two syllables? So when we looked at the poem, we realized that the questions we had were about poetry, about how we make poetry. Next, take that blank sheet of paper and draw this poem as literally as you can. Draw the picture that you see when you imagine this poem and be as specific and literal as you can, but don't go beyond what's in the poem. Only draw what you read. Take a couple minutes and do that. Press pause. Come back when you're ready to continue. So you drew a wheelbarrow glazed with rainwater next to some chickens. Now what I want you to do is take that other colored writing utensil and draw the imagery around it. Where is this? What setting makes sense? The surface of the moon doesn't make sense. So where does? Draw a context around the picture that makes this image make sense. A red wheelbarrow glazed with rainwater beside the white chickens. I'll Take a pause for a minute, draw that context in with your other colored writing utensil, and come back to this video when you're ready. Okay, the next step is to do something even harder, and that is to try to draw the meaning of the poem. What you could draw were the red wheelbarrow, the rainwater, the chickens, but what you couldn't draw is so much depends upon. And that's where our meaning comes in. What would it mean to draw the meaning of the poem without worrying about any sense of the literal? In order to draw the meaning of the poem, you have to bring in so much depends upon. If you don't do that, you haven't addressed the meaning of the poem. Can you draw that? I'm not asking can you write it or explain it. I'm asking can you draw that? Take a few minutes and think about that. See what you can come up with. Press pause. Okay, you're back. Maybe you struggled a little bit. Here's a little bit of a hint. What's the meaning of the Mona Lisa painting? Is the meaning something beyond a picture of this face? Is the meaning something beyond the portrait of this woman? Does it mean anything or is it a picture? If you said it's a picture that doesn't really have a meaning, what can we say about this poem? Is this a poem that has lots of meaning? One critic said that the line so much depends upon is simply a way to draw our attention to these images that make up the poem. That the meaning of the poem is to draw our attention to why poetry matters. Because it does. It draws our attention. It helps us imagine. It gives us a context for us to think. So much depends upon a red wheelbarrow glazed with rainwater beside the white chickens. What is it that depends on that? The poem itself. Is that the only answer? No. There's other ways to approach this poem, but that's one. Several of the people in class asked, what exactly is it that depends upon the wheelbarrow so much? Some people ended up saying it was the farmer depended upon it. The chickens depended upon it. The cycle of life and death was brought up. That's interesting. So those are other ways of looking at it aside from the idea that um, the art itself, the poem itself, depends upon those images. So at this point, I need you to go to Google Classroom and you'll find the additional um, reflection work. There are two questions that ask you where you think I was going with this lesson and how you could tell if you did a good job or not. And the second part is for you to write a so much depends upon poem. And I'll show you my example. Let me see if I can get to that quickly and easily here.
Okay, so the first bit that you're going to do that's on Google Classroom is um, explaining the learning target from today, which I did not tell you. I expect you to be able to come up with. You can read your instructions there. And the second is to write out descriptions of students who mastered that target or who just, they get it but they haven't mastered it, and somebody who needs support. Again, read the descriptions. If you need extra support on that, see me in class. And then here's the creative version. You're going to write a So Much Depends Upon poem, and you can do it in whatever format you'd like. The only requirement is that your poem must focus on images, like the ones that are found in the original poem. But you can, you can write it however you wish. Our example, uh, in our example, the poem was uh, arranged like this, so that uh, it went three words, one word, three words, one word. But you don't have to do it that way. My example that I did this morning um, is shaped like a saxophone, and it's about a saxophone. And what you'll notice is that so much depends upon a brass saxophone shining